Good evening and a good evoch and welcome to the daily Rambam Shir, three chapters per day. Lesson 187, 188 and 189, Hilchish Gogois from chapter 3 until 11th. Since right now we are covering the rules of Hilchish Gogois, it will be very appropriate to introduce the original Pasuk in Chumash Vayikro, where it speaks about Shugogis in general, and the way the Torah states, Nefesh ki sechto mikol mitzvahis havaye. When a soul will transgress, transgress from one of the mitzvahis of the commandments of Hashem. So the obvious question, so it should be, Nefesh ki sechto, obviously the only way to make a sin when you transgress, how come the Torah tells you Mikol Mitzvah is Hashem? So according to some of the commentaries that occasionally, sometimes a person is under the impression that what he is doing is a mitzvah. He is excited to harm somebody who he feels that part of the education towards him, part of bringing the right atmosphere will be to humiliate, to embarrass, or to do any harm to somebody, and he will even cover it that this is a mitzvah. Comes the Torah and tells you even something that you are under the impression that we is mikol mitzvah is Hashem, nevertheless, still can be this same situation will be defined according to Torah as a nefesh, as a sol kisechto. And in continuation that we were speaking previously about the amount of shigogois, amount of sins that if a person committed them in a state of unknowing, in a state of shigogo, unintentional, he needs to bring a korban. Some of the sins happens to be alayas related, some of them maholois related. Uh, nevertheless, they must be in a state of shigogo. For that reason, if two witnesses are testifying and they are stating that this individual actually ate chalev, a forbidden type of fats, and he denies and declares, I did not eat, he will be exempt from a korban. The reason that though two witnesses are reliable, but by him saying I did not eat, it's being interpreted by us as he is responding to their testimony that he did not eat it in a state of shigig. He did not eat it inadvertently, but he ate it in deliberately. And for that reason, since any type of a sin that was committed deliberately is not going to be atoned via a korban chatos, for that reason he will be exempt from a korban chatos. However, in case he is silent, he is not expressing a verbal consent, but he is just silent, he will have to bring the chatos offering because at that time, his silence are being interpreted as a admission, as a consent to what was said to him. Since in Isuin, the Isu can be established via testimony of one single aid, so even in a case that it was one single witness was declaring that he ate a chalev and his silent will be a consent which will make him liable to bring a korban. Part of the process of the chatos that it must come on a very specific sin and for a very specific sinner. For that reason, if a person designated a chatos for the sin of eating blood, he cannot use the same chatos 
for the sin of eating fats. And for that reason, if a person brought a multitask hatos, he brought one animal with the intention that it should atone of two types of sins he committed. So given the fact that it doesn't stand the criteria for a hatos, this particular animal must be go to ire at sheepil bemum, must go to the field and until a blemish will occur to her, and then I will be able to sell it, and with the proceeds of the money, I will buy two animals. One of them will gonna go to one of the sins, and the other one will gonna go to the other type of a sin. Chatos can be accepted from each and every Jew who committed a sin unless he is notorious to be a mechalel desecrating Shabosois Befalhesie or Avivet Avoid Azore. And also, if a person was accustomed repeatedly to commit a specific sin. So, a korban is not going to be accepted from him if the purpose of atonement is for that specific sin that he is accustomed to violate deliberately. When it comes to Yom Kippurim, it generally will be able to atone only and make an exemption to those people who are liable for a Oshom Toloi. Oshom Toloi is type of offering when a person is in a state of a doubt whether he committed a sin that a Hatos is liable for it. So while he is in a state of a doubt, Oshom Toloi must be brought by him. However, in case that Yom Kippur passed by before he was actually bringing the korban, he will be exempt. The reason, since it is written in the Torah, Lifnei Hashem Tithoru, before Hashem, you will purify yourself, it, it comes to imply that those type of sins, that the only one who has knowledge whether you committed the sin or not is only Hashem, for those type of sin Tithoru, and you don't need any additional offering. However, all type of other sinners who need to bring a chatos, whether a set chatos, or whether a korban oile veyored, or any type of a shomois, not oshom toloi, but oshom vadai, yom kippurim won't atone for them. Further than this, even if a person Oyoyim HaKippurim generally would atone, as we have just said, someone who is subject to Korban Oshom Tolui. Oyoyim HaKippurim will atone for him as long as he treats Oyoyim HaKippurim seriously. However, if he takes the entire idea of Oyoyim HaKippurim lightly and he is mezalzel in it, Oyoyim HaKippurim is not going to be atoning for him and for that reason he will still be liable for the Korban Oshom Tolui. The summary of the second chapter speaks about a general principle which we have covered both in Hilchois Maholi Sasuris and Biri Sasuris is about the general rule which is called Ein Isu Halol Isu. A person in principle cannot accumulate in the same type of action, two additional prohibitions. In other words, a new prohibition cannot apply upon a pre-existing prohibition when he is doing the same action, unless three exceptions are appearing and those type of exception is called Isur Bevas Achas. If both of them, of those Isurim, was introduced simultaneously, or 
Isu Koilil, that this particular second Isu happens to include new people or more segments of society, or it is Isu Moisif, it comes to add an extra severity. So when those extra Isu happens to be or simultaneously or includes more people or brings a extra quality of severity, then Isu will apply to Isu. A prohibition will be able to edit, to be added upon a pre-existing uh, pro uh, prohibition. We'll give an example. If someone is slaughtering a animal of Kodoshim outside the base of Mikdosh on Shabbos. So, and he has an intention to do it for the sake of Avedo Zohar, for the sake of idol worship. So in such a uh, case, he will be liable for three chatois, three chatos offering. First of all, because he was slaughtering Kodoshim outside. Second, slaughtering on Shabbos is also a Isur Kores. And obviously Avoid is is a Isur uh, Kores as, as well. Now, for that reason, if a person had in mind and he said, that, I'm sorry, he will be liable for those three Aveyois, three Chatois, only in case that he clarified verbally before he was doing so, that I have in mind to slaughter for the Aveyda Zoe only in the end of the Shechito. So at that time, the completion of the Shechito for the Avedo Zohar's sake, for Kodshim Bechut's sake, and for the Shabbos' sake, they happen to appear simultaneously, and for that reason, he will need to bring three Chatois. However, if a person verbally was silent, or he declared that he will start to serve the Avedo Zohar at the beginning of this ladder, so what happened? The exposure to the prohibition of the Avedo Zohar starts immediately. And the Shechita, the slaughtering of Kodoshim Bachutz, will happen only when the majority of the two Simonim will be slaughtered, not a second before. So at the moment that it will reach that point, he's not really violating a slaughtering of a Kodoshim outside the base of Mikdosh. Because when can you violate slaughtering of a Kodoshim outside of base of Mikdosh? Only when this particular animal is fit to be offered inside the base of Mikdosh. But given the fact that he had in mind that the slaughter of Aveda Zohar will trigger the beginning of the Shechite, so when it reached the point of the two simonim, it was already disqualified for bringing the offering inside Beis Amikdosh, and for that reason, he will be exempt from violating a slaughtering outside the Beis Amikdosh. There is a situation where a person can do one action, and he will be exposed to many korbonis when he has done it unintentionally or unannoyingly. Example, if he had forbidden relationship with the wife of his brother while she is in a state of anido. So the amount of chatos offering is, again, first for Aishas Ochiv, for Aishas Ish, so both of them happens to be coming simultaneously, 
for the ISO NIDO, he will be liable since there is an element of a ISO Moisif, there is an extra added ISO because a NIDO is forbidden also to her husband while she is in a state of a NIDO. So given the fact that there is an extra added prohibition introduced to her, for that reason it will spread also will be added to the other Isurim as well. In the third chapter, he is specifically dealing with Isui Arayois, with the prohibition of incests. So over there, the Yediois, any point where he was exposed to knowledge will divide the state of Shigogo, of unknowing, and will increase the amount, amount of offerings. Sometimes the multiple offerings he will be liable will be a result of the multiple people he was engaging with those relationship. Example, a lady or her husband went to Medina Sayam and Witnesses came and testified that he died. As a result of it, he had multiple relations with many people based upon the assumption that he is dead. Turns out he is alive, he came back, and therefore her liability to bring the amount of offerings will be determined upon the amount of people he, she, was having relationship, one korban per each and every person. Because again, although it was in a state of lack of knowledge, a single state of lack of knowledge, but given the fact that it was with multiple people, for that reason, the amount of korbanos will be increased. So again, when it comes to Arayus, what will determine the amount of korbanos is two factors, or the factor of the division of people, or the factors of the division of the state of lack of knowledge. If it was one person with one lack state, with one state of lack of knowledge, it will be only one korban. If it was one person with many states of lack of knowledge, which means she had one relationship with the same person, but it was divided upon many halomois. So for that reason, she will need to bring amount of korbanois based on the halomois, the amounts of the lack of state of knowledge. And now we will be moving to lesson 187. When it comes to ma'acholois, forbidden type of food, so, in those cases, many achilois, many feasts, as long as it is being done based upon shame echod, one type of prohibition, again, one helem, one lack of state of knowledge, it will trigger only one chiyuv, one Hatos offering. On the other hand, sometimes a person can eat only one kezais, but he will be exposed to many shemois, to many isurim. In such a case, he will be liable of each and every shame, each and every prohibition, as long as it is subject to those rulings about Isu, cholal isu, in those type of exception. For example, if a person is in a state of tumo, he is contaminated, and he eats a kezais of chelev, of a holy kezais, on Yom Kippurim. So he will be subject of 
full chatois and one oshum. He will be subject to the fact that he is a contaminated person who ate something that belongs to Kodesh, to Holi. On top of it, he ate chilev, which is fats. On top of it, it happens to be a leftover. On top of it, it was Yom Kippurim. He will need to bring as well a Oshom for Me'ilo for the in, in, um, inappropriate usage of the um, property of the Hegdesh, so-called embezzlement. So in this case, it is a perfect illustration where the Isu Moisif and Isu Kuilel and Isu Bevasachas, they coming on the picture. Initially, this Kezais was prohibited only because it is Chelev. From the fact that he is Tomei, a state of a tumor prohibits him not only in a kezais, it will prohibit him in the kezais boso as well. So by him being a tome, it is koilel, it includes not only chilev, but includes also boso. For that reason, he will be higher for the chilev as well. Now, since it happens to be also noiso, so noiso happens to be a isur moisif. Because while the person were not allowed to eat the chilev, the fats, but the mizbeach would be prohibited generally, the mizbeach will generally will consume the fats because that's what the imurim are all about. But when it comes noiso, even the Mizbeach cannot go and consume this type of Chilev. Then comes Yom Kippurim, and Yom Kippurim, since it prohibits him from any access to any type of food, not only Chilev and not only Psar Kodesh, but any type of food, so as a result of Yom Kippurim being a more severe, more intense quality of a prohibition, it will be added an extra isu. So here is again a perfect example where a person can eat one kezais only and yet he will be exposed to five korbanois. Four of them are chatois and the fifth of them will be a oshom me'ilo. Same way as a yedio will be able to increase in the amount of offering a person will be liable to, a yedio, a knowledge, can also decrease and eliminate altogether a liability a person otherwise would have in regard to korbanis. Example, if a person ate a chotzizais, half of a zais, and after the chotzizais, suddenly he realized that he, what he ate is a forbidden food. But given the fact that it was a chotzizais, so he's not liable for a chatos. And then after he remembered, he continued, he forgot again, and he continued to eat the other chotzizais. Had between the first half a zais and the other half a zais would be no knowledge of him, he would be liable to bring a chatos. But given the fact that his exposure, his awareness took place between the first half and the other half, it serves as a division and turns him to be totally exempt from any type of a korban. In the second chapter of this lesson, the Rambam deals about the liability of Chatois when it comes to avoid zone, idol worship. So each and every activity, whether it is slaughter, whether it is bringing incense, bowing down or pouring, 
for Avodah Zoreh, though a person made all of them in one state of lack of knowledge, nevertheless, he will be liable for each and every service separately. As long as the person had a shgogo, the lack of knowledge, in the Averis. He knew that Avodah Zoe is forbidden, but he did not know that those particular Averis are uh, forbidden. So for that reason, each and every one of those activities adds an extra korban, extra offering. But if a person was in a state of shigogo regarding the Avodah Zoe, he lacked any awareness about the Avodah Zoe is forbidden, then his liability will be only one korban. A similar example when it comes to Shabbos, a person who had no prior about Shabbos whatsoever. He was a Tinek Shenishbo, he didn't know about the existence of Shabbos and he violated multiple Shabboses. At the moment he learned about Shabbos, he brings one chatos to a ton for his multiple sins who came as a result of not knowing primarily about the existence of Shabbos. A person who knew the concept of Shabbos, but he did not know which day or that particular day is Shabbos, so then he brings one korban, one offering per each and every Shabbos that he was violating. Then there is a third section where a person knew about Iker Shabbos, he knew about the day, but he was not aware of each and every melocho separately. Such a person must bring a chatos offering for each and every melocho he committed on each and every Shabbos. When it comes to bring about melocho, so since every melocho consists of a av and tuldo, he will be liable if he has done many tuldois of one av or made even an av and tulde he will be liable only one if he did different melochois so then based upon the melochois he have committed he will have to bring shabbos there is a primary rule that only meleches machsheves also to you when it comes to be exposed to a chiyuv chatos in chiyuv a Shabbos, a intention to do a forbidden activity must take place. A intention to do activity that happens to be forbidden. He may not know about that the activity is forbidden, but he must to have a intention to do a activity that is forbidden. For example, if a person has in mind on Shabbos his intention, and that's what he is under the impression he is doing, to chop something that is already uprooted. And in reality, he chopped something that is rooted. So this is not Meleches Machsheves because his outcome was totally not reflecting his intention. In such a case, he will be exempt from Korban Chatos. The third chapter, he covers the condition that are necessary to bring a Oshom Tolui. A Oshom is a offering, type of a, the literal translation of a Oshom, a fold. Uh, in this case, it's called Oshom Tolui, a sin, a hanging sin type of offering. And hanging sin will come only for such a sin that he, when he is certain that he committed this sin will be a chatos kvoi, a set chatos. So when he is in a state of doubt whether he committed such a sin that a chatos 
is subject to that type of a sin, so he is in a state of uncertainty, he needs to bring a offering which is called Oshom Tolui. But in order to bring, must be a specific definition of this doubt. And according to the Rambam, it must be a Isul Kovo. Illustration. If there are two cans, one of the cans contains a permitted can of fats, and the other contains a prohibited can of fats. Of fats. He ate one of them, and he doesn't know which one of them he ate. Given the fact that it was what we called ikba isure, set, it was a present prohibited item out there, and in light of the presence of the prohibited item was a activity took place where the details of the activity are not known yet. But only under this background can be created and defined a situation of a suffix which will yield a liability of a Oshom Tolui. If this illustration was not met, no liability of a Oshom Tolui is required. According to the amount of korban chatos a person will be liable in case he is aware or he became aware of his commitment of a sin, based upon this same situation will be the amount of osham tolui a person will have to bring in case it was a doubt. Sometimes there is a scenario, there is two containers, one of them is of a permitted item and the other one is from a forbidden item. A person took ate one of them and since he's not aware, he des designated and offered a Oshom Tolui. Later, he went ahead and he ate the remaining cans. At this point, given the fact that certainly he committed over here the sin of eating the chile, which is not clear whether it was done the first time or the second time, but definitely a chile was consumed. For that reason, at this point, after he already finished the second one, he must bring a chatos. In the 189th lesson, so the first subject is Oshom Shifcho Harufo. And the conditions that are required in order to bring it. So, what is a shifcho harufo is being defined already in Hilchois Isure Bio. In a short, we're talking over here, a uh, half, a made half, a uh, baschoirin that is engaged to Eved Ivri. So, somewhat she has an element of Aishas Ish. However, the punishment for the person who had engaged in a forbidden relationship with her bezodoin, while she gets the lashes, he will bring the korban. No matter whether he's done it bezodoin intentionally or unintentionally, however, it needs to be when he completed his bio. For that reason, even if their testimony that he had a relationship with her and he denies, so similarly as we learned before, when a person has a migu, has a way to explain his statement, in our case, when a person denies, it means that he is testifying that the bill was not completed by him. By Shifcho Harufo, whether he did it in one Ha'elem, one state of lack of knowledge, whether he did it in multiple state of la lack of knowledge, as long as it was with one Shifcho Harufo, the amount of Korbonis will remain one. 
However, if he's done it with many shivchoi, scharufois, so the amount of the korbanois will be determined based on the amount of gufim, of bodies, he was committed the crime with. Another type of oshom that is being brought, it's called asham gzelois. When a person denied a demand, a monetary demand, whether the monetary demand came as a result of a partnership or employee wages or a loan or any type of a monetary request that is being denied and later he admits. However, the original denial was accompanied with a shvuo. In a case he wants to do shvuo, he needs to bring that type of a korban, which is called a sham gzeilois, and add the choimesh. Osham me'ilo is being brought when a person was benefiting from a hekdesh in the amount of shove pruto. So again, he needs to bring back the amount he benefited from Hekdesh, add a choymesh, add 25%, and needs to bring a offering which is called a sham me'ilo. A sham me'ilo misappropriate use of Hekdesh needs to be determined based on each and every plate he was benefiting from when it comes to food consumption. Though everything was done in one state of lack of knowledge, nevertheless, given the fact that in Me'ilo there are special added severities, for example, if a person makes other person benefit, will be considered like he benefited himself, there is Shliach Lidvar there is a emissary which will be shifting the blame towards the person who sent him, which is an unusual uh, ruling in comparison to the rest of rules of Torah, as we have discussed, that ancient Yachlit Varaveiro, but when it comes to Meilo, for that reason, there is another severity in Meilo, as we have said, that though it was done in one state, of Helem, nevertheless, the amount of korbonois of Hashomis, Hashami Eloi, will be determined based on the amount of plates that he was consuming from. In any type of uh, liability of a Oshom, in case when a person is doubtful whether he is subject to a Oshom, whether it is a Shami Eloi, a Sham Gzeilois, in all of those cases, in a case of a doubt, there is a total exemption. Only in a case of a doubt in Chatois, then the outcome will be Oshom Tolui. But any type of a doubt in case of a Shomois, or even as we're going to le learn later by a Korban, Chatos, Oile so there is no Oshom Tolui and so on. In the second chapter of the uh, Lesson 189, we are covering all the korbanois which are called oile v'yoyred. As opposed to a korban chatos, which is a set offering, regardless the budget of the person, when it comes to korban oile v'yoyred, the korban will be on a sliding scale based on the budget and the socio, and the, uh, just the economical condition of the person. It will be important to introduce the first posuk where the Torah speaks about korban oile v'yered, and the Torah tells us when a person brings a meal, a flower offering, v'nefesh kisechto. And Rashi explains that a person who brings a flower offering, the Torah is viewing as he offered his own soul. And the obvious question, how come it is mentioned only by a flower offering, it's not mentioned by a bird offering, which is also br comes when a person is in a poor state. And the explanation is given, when a person 
is liable for a bird offering, the poverty is not that terrible because after all, he has some funds that with them, he was able to purchase the bird offering. But when a co person comes and brings a flower offering, he actually brings it from the entitlement that he managed to collect from the Leke, Chikho and Teo, the gifts to the poor that a person is committed to live in his field. Since this Oni, this poor man, was able to use the flower to feed his soul, so when he's giving this away, the Torah views as Venefesh Kisakariv, because he could have acquired Chaye Nafshoi, the life of his soul, and be satiated and not remain hungry, and he preferred to bring it for a common. There is six type of situation when the korban oile v'yoyred is applicable. The first one is ayoyledes, a lady who gives birth. So if she is rich, she will bring one lamb as a oilo and two birds for a chatos, benyoyno, which means one of two, to a chatos. However, if she is poor, she will bring two birds. One of them will be oilo and the other one will be chatos. When it comes to a king and a koihen, when they are liable to be in a, to bring a sliding scale type of offering, they will be as equal to an ordinary Jew, because the difference between a Kohen and a Melech, while the Melech brings a soil, a goat male, and a Kohen brings a poor, a bull, is applicable only to a chatos kavua, to a set chatos. Then they have a custom design type of a korban. But when it comes to korban oil v'yered, they will be as equal to any ordinary Jew. So we have Yeledes is the first type that brings a sliding scale, a Metsuiro, a person who was coming out from the state of leprosy. If a person swear Shvua Soedus, his friend demanded from him he to testify on his behalf a testimony which will benefit him. He had the testimony and he rejected to swear and later he regrets and part of his teshuva atonement is that korban, which again will be based on his budget. If a person was swearing a false swear, it's called shvuas bitui. And then there is Tumas Mikdosh Vekodosh, a person entered in a state of Tumo to the base Hamikdosh, or in a state of Tumo, he ate something that belongs to the Kodoshim, something to the meat, to the products that only Koihanim in a state of Tahal are entitled. In the Process when a person his status is moving lower, he actually can benefit for his own sake from the change that is being resulted of the exchange. Illustration when a person designated a hundred dollars to purchase an animal, turns out he realized or he realized or he became poor. At this time he cannot afford an animal. So he will buy a bird, let's say $10 a bird. So he has $90 change. This $90 is totally accessible for him and he can use it for whatever purpose he wishes to. There is a general rule that is important to remember. While a Oni, a poor man, can take upon himself a Korban Oshil, a offering of a rich man, 
and he fulfilled his duties. Oshir, a rich man, Shehevi Korban Oni, that he brought a Korban Oni where he shouldn't, loyot, so he did not fulfill his obligation, and the duty still remains upon him. In the third chapter, the Rambam deals about the uniqueness that exists in Tumas Mikdosh Vekodoshov. All type of Chayvei Krisus, people who would otherwise had they done it, the sin knowingly, deliberately, they will be subject to chorus. However, when they have done it, Beshigeg, they are subject only to Chatos. So in order to qualify for a Chatos, though that you had no prior knowledge at the time of the sin, as long as you have knowledge at after the sin, you realize, it's called Yehoida Eil of Achatos, you realize that what was committed by you is a sin, then you are subject to a Achatos offering. When it comes to Tumas Mikdosh Vekodoshov, since when the Torah describes the Chidush, the Chiv of Tumas Mikdosh Vekodoshov, the Torah states, Vene'elamimenu, and it was hidden from him. When the Torah tells it became hidden, it implies that initially he had a knowledge. So for that reason, any liability of a Korban Oile Veyered for Tumas Mikdosh Vekodoshov will require a prior knowledge at the beginning, a forgetfulness in the middle, and a final knowledge at the end. If this process was not met, there is an exemption for the Korban in case that a person was exposed to those Tumas Mikdosh Vekodoshov. All those type of situation where the person is not qualified to bring this Korban Oile Veyered, so the atonement will be achieved via the holiness of Yom Kippur itself, via the goats that is being slaughtered in and sprinkled inside the Kodesh HaKodoshim and outside the Kodesh HaKodoshim, and the bowl of Yom Kippurim, they will be the one who will atone in this scene when a person, for one technical reason or another, won't be able to bring the Korban Oil Veyered for that particular Tum Os Mikdash Vekodoshov. Thank you very much and have a great week.